morning. Good morning. Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> so I want to take a, a step back to where we started the week, and we were talking about expectations. And um, do you want? Let's let's reenact it. It was fun the first time, Sue. <laughs> so Sue had to answer some questions, and she did pretty well. And um, when she got the question right, I put the um, the soupy yolky egg over here, right? But when she got the egg or the egg, the question wrong, I got to put it on your. Oh, that one's hard. <laughs> Ouch. Ow. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to have a goose egg. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I cracked it on her head. Not quite so hard. Sorry about that. That's all right. But everyone expected, after you had like four or five questions right, that when you got it wrong, that you were going to get a soupy egg on your head. Yeah. But you didn't. So that was awesome. Um, sorry again. <laughs> but what we talked about was that Everyone in Jerusalem was expecting to see something different at the end of the week. They expected that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem to be the king of Jerusalem, of Israel, right here today. But what they expected to find was not what they found. And when we get to the end of the story, we find the very same thing happening, that they went to the tomb the next morning, and they expected to find Jesus. But really what they found, this is kind of hard too, was just nothing. He was gone. The tomb was empty. There was nothing inside. And they did everything that they did in Jewish custom. They put perfume on his body. They wrapped him in the garments, and they laid him. They put the big stone in front of that cave so that he couldn't get out. But that expectation, again, wasn't met. And it says um, in in John verse 20, verse 9. It's in parentheses. It's kind of like a little note, but it's so important. It says, they still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had risen from the dead. Their expectations and what they saw, the reality, just wasn't the same. And at the beginning of the week, I asked the question, what are your expectations of God? Do you think that your expectations are going to meet what he gives you? And so I, I wonder, do you expect that God will always love you? Or do you think that there's sometimes times that you're bad, so bad that God can't love you. You know, it tells us that the love will always be there. Um, Romans 8, 38 and 39 says that there is not life or death, angels or demons, or anything that could separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So we need to expect that God will always love us because we know that he will. What about his presence? Do we expect that Jesus will always be there, that God will always be in our hearts if we ask him to be there? Um, Matthew 28, 20 says, Surely I am with you always till the end of time. And what about transforming or changing us? Do we expect that Jesus gives us that spirit that rose him from the dead and can change us? Do we have that expectation? Romans 12, 2 tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, but that we should be transformed by the spirit of God, and that we can do far more imaginable than we could ever imagine. That's Ephesians 3.20. And do we believe that there is a plan? Do we expect that God has a plan for us? And probably just like Holy Week, uh, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, it is something that we don't expect. And 1 Corinthians um, 1, uh, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, or can conceive what God has prepared for those who believe. What I want you to know, boys and girls, is that our God is so much bigger than anything that we can expect, and that we really probably shouldn't have been surprised that there was an empty tomb that morning, because God is bigger than anything that we can ever imagine. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we come here today so excited because we get to celebrate that you rose from the dead. It is so hard to understand and comprehend all of what that means. But God, I just pray that we would remember that your love, your presence, your ability to transform us, and your plans for us are really more than we could ever expect, and we thank you for that. We thank you for um, for your love to die on the cross and to raise from the dead, that you would open those gates of heaven, that we would someday be there with you forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Adrian.